Hey, I'm Pat, and in this video, we'll be going over loops in Roblox Studio and how to loop code. There's many different, there's three different kinds of loops, unless I'm missing one, I'm pretty sure it's just three. But there's three different kinds of loops. Uh, the first one we'll go over is a while loop. So I'm just putting true here as a placeholder, and I'll explain it in a second. So while loop starts off with while, and then you leave a space, and then after that, you put your condition. Uh, your condition is like in an if statement when you check to see if something is true and then you know you just put do and then inside of here you'll have your body which is where the code will be and then you have your end right so what the while loop does is it checks the c this condition here and if this condition is true then it will execute the code that's inside this body here so run any of the code that's in here and once it's done, it'll reach this end and it'll go back up to the top and then it'll check again to see if the condition at the top is true. If it's still true, it'll run through the code again and it'll keep doing that until the code, until the condition at the top is false when it checks it. So we'll make a variable called count. This is like a place uh, for an example. And we'll do while count is less than five and then we'll increase count by one using plus equals. So what this will do is it'll increase count by one each iteration of the loop. So the iteration means like each time it runs through the loop is one iteration. So what it does is it checks the value. If this is true, it is true because count is actually zero. Zero is less than five. Then it'll run through this code. It'll increase count by one and then it'll go through, reach the end. And once it reaches the end, that's the end of one iteration. And then I'll keep going through it and I'll do multiple iterations until this value at the top is true. Once it is, it'll continue on and it'll uh, run the rest of the code and the script. So if this is always, so if it has a condition up here, like say you just put true, uh, that means that this condition will always be true. And this while loop will be infinite, basically it'll never end and it'll never reach this print statement. So it'll never reach any code after the while loop because it's infinite, right? So we're gonna undo this. And we're gonna test this code to see what happens, all right? So we go ahead and run it and see, it says times five at the end here. That actually means that it happened five times. We hit this little arrow and it'll show us so it incremented five times. You see it printed increment five times and then it prints hello. So you can see it doesn't print hello until it's done with uh, incrementing the count, right? Now say we do have like a infinite loop like this. Oh, that's not, okay, I can't spell. But say we do have an infinite loop like this and we want to break it at some point. Um, or say we have a ver uh, loop that we're doing and we want to break it in case like some strange thing happens or like some th in case of some thing happens, whatever, right? So what we'll do is we'll add an if statement and we'll check to see if count, uh, we'll make it interesting. We'll see if count is an even number or if count is divisible by five then we will break. So what does break mean? Actually, we'll print out count as well. We'll print out what count is and then we'll break at the loop. So what break does is it quite literally, it breaks the loop. So even if this, uh, val this condition at the top is true, break will completely stop the loop and it'll just go on. So it'll stop the loop where it's at. No code after this will be run, kind of like a return. So you'll see it won't actually autofill for us willingly because it knows that code isn't supposed to be here. And we'll actually give it a uh, red underline because you see it expected an end because after the break, you can only really put ends. Now we could have something here because this would be outside of the if statement, right? but we can't have something right after the break in the same body because it won't run any code inside the while loop after it breaks. 
and then after the break it breaks out and goes and prints hello so we'll go hide and uh actually we'll do something like this we'll print count and let's go ahead and run it again oh i forgot to stop but it's all right so we'll run it again and you'll see it gives us one two three four five and it prints five two times because we print right before it breaks and then it prints hello after it breaks if we wanted to we can actually get rid of this break and here what we'll do is we'll say count is divisible by five over there and if we run it it'll actually end up being an infinite loop and what happens is our studio does not like that our game really doesn't like that and the studio will pretty much freeze for a minute before stopping the script on its own and throwing an error in the output saying exhausted or whatever just give it some time eventually it'll figure itself out i mean depending on your computer i think some people have it have their com studio will completely crash on them if they have an infinite while loop so just something to keep in mind is you know be careful with while loops. So if you have an infinite while loop, something like this, it can definitely crash your studio or cause it to freeze up for a while. And you can see it got the 104,000 before we reached a, reached in a script timeout and it says an exhausted allowed execution time. Basically it means that, you know, it was running for too long and it caused studio to get upset. So. You can see we can scroll through it and it'll say blah 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 is divisible by five. And you can see if we type in hello in here, we can't see anywhere where it says hello. That's because it never got to this due to the fact that this is an infinite loop. Alright, so hopefully that all makes sense. Now say uh, we want this to run infinitely, but we don't want our studio or our computer to instantly combust and cause an explosion or whatever, right? So for something like that, what we will use is uh, task.wait. Now, what task.wait does is it basically it yields the script. We're actually going to put this at the end. So what yielding means is it basically it just pauses the script until uh, one second has passed or whatever we put in here. We can put 100 seconds, one second. So this is the number in seconds you want the script to pause for. And basically, since Lua is uh, single threaded, it will it only can run uh, by line by line, and it uh it waits until that line is finished executing before it moves on to running the next line, right? So what it'll do is it'll wait one second here because this is a task out wait it yields. You can also do uh, just wait, but task out wait is better practice. I explained task out wait versus wait in our video. I'm not going to explain it here, but just use task out wait. It looks a little bit uglier, but it's much better to use. And basically, what that'll do is it'll keep our uh, computer from catching on fire when we try and run the script. And I think I did a normal test, but it's all right. You'll see now every second it prints out something. Now, this is obviously very much more slower. We can't actually just leave it empty and it'll default to a like a low decimal. I think it's 0.03. I think 0 0.003 or something like that. What did I just do? Oh, I just started a local test server. That is not what I wanted to do. Okay, my computer is... Alright, so I want it to run. And now we don't have anything in there. You can see it prints much faster now. And we can kind of scroll up and look through. And it's scrolling so insanely fast now, but you can see we can speed it up a little bit if we want to. Now, that's enough with while loops. I don't really want to keep going over the same thing. So we can also do a repeat until loop. And what a repeat until loop does is we're going to add a break statement here so we don't get a exhausted but obviously we won't but way the way repeat until a loop works is it'll run this code first so 
it'll run the body code first and then it checks the count so it runs all the code inside of it before it checks the uh, condition at the end so the way this is slightly different than a while loop is the while loop will check the condition at the top so if the condition is already uh, false then it won't run the code inside of it but a repeat until loop will always run the code at least one time before it checks the condition so they're kind of similar they're slightly different uh, there's kind of some use cases but a repeat until loop is just kind of weird I kind of use it sometimes but you know it's whatever so you can see it works like this uh, but what we can do is repeat until count is greater than five and now when we test it bro what what am I doing all right repeat until count is less than five I pressed the wrong wrong button but you can see it prints one and then hello even though count is already less than five it already it ran the uh, body the code inside the body one time already so that's how repeat until loop works very similar you can also use the break keyword just like a while loop any loops you can use the break keyword and now the last one I want to go over is a for loop and now the for loop is a little bit better than all the other ones really in the sense that it allows you to have a condition but it also allows you to have a control variable so you can actually define a variable inside the header for the for loop the header being the first line where you write the for loop so we'll just use I that's kind of a common uh, control variable name but you can name this whatever you can name it count you can name it I whatever it's just a normal variable but it's going to be only able to be accessed inside the for loop body and then after the I what you do is you put the number that you want the control variable to reach so say we want I to reach the number 10 we just put 10 and then after that you can put how much you want to increase the control variable by uh, at the end of each iteration so we can leave that blank and it will default to 1 we have to uh, define our control variable. We have to initialize it. We have to give it a starting value. So we'll start it at one. We can start it at zero. We'll just start at one. So, and what we'll do is we'll print i each iteration. So the way this works is it creates a variable called i. It sets it to one, and then our condition is just ten. So once i our control variable equals ten, uh, you can see the it's separated by a comma here. Once it reaches 10, it will end the loop. So we'll go through each iteration, and at the end, it will increase by one. We can add, uh, we can make it so it increases by five or two here if we want, but we can just leave that part empty if we want it to default to one. So if we run this, we'll see it prints out uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? And then we get hello at the end after the uh, for loop is done running. Now something we can do with this is we can use this to make a uh, like something that prints out even numbers between 1 and 10. So if we can do if mod i mod 2 equals 0 which is just checking to see if it's an even number then we'll print i. So now this will only print even numbers because i is a variable that we can change and access inside this loop we can't access it outside because uh, you see it's only used inside this uh, body of this loop so once you run this now you'll see we'll only get even numbers two four six eight ten and we can also just to show you like uh, how if some a way of uh, in, you know like putting this into a function what did I just do? I don't know. Alright, so what does this do, right? So we have a function called print events and it has two parameters, start val and end val. And what we do is we set i to the starting value and then we uh, 
we make a for loop and we have our control variable initialized to the starting value, right? And then we say that we want the loop to end at our end value. And then inside we just have an if statement to check if i is equal. And if it is, then we print i. And now what we can do is we can actually uh, call this function whenever we want in our script. And we can give it a start value like y, 1 and 10. And we can also give us something like 20 and 30. Now when we run it, you'll see 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 20, 24, 26, 38, or 28, 30. I can't count. It's okay. Uh, so that's how, you know, you can use a function for that. Hopefully uh, that's understandable and makes sense. Now, the last thing I wanted to do, uh, well, one thing I should talk about uh, first is uh, using loops in your scripts. You shouldn't try and avoid to overusing while loops. Most of the time when you're looping something, you're going to be using a for loop or there might be a better way to use it other than, or do something other than using a while loop or looping because it's just, usually you wanna avoid using loops because it can kind of be a little intensive on performance depending on what you're doing inside the loop and how long you're looping for, etc. So I just wanted to kind of put that out there to make sure you don't overuse loops in your scripts. If you're gonna use a loop, try and think of another way of doing what you're doing without a loop. And if you can't figure out another way, then you know use a loop. But most of the time there's another way uh, for loops very commonly used uh, not really a good replacement for for loops we'll go over them more in depth in the next video and show you just how powerful for loops really are but for now I'm going to uh, give you something to write on your own try and figure out how to write some of your own code kind of like the last video so what we're going to be doing is making a fizzbuzz script this is kind of a very common uh, programming script uh, for like interviews and programming and just to show that somebody knows like the basics of programming this is kind of very common so what fizzbuzz is is you uh, loop through or you print numbers 1 to 100 and you print if the number is divisible by 3 if the number is divisible by 3 you print fizz if the number is divisible by five, you print buzz, and you print fizzbuzz if it's divisible by three and five. So basically, it shouldn't be too hard. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm probably gonna have like a some text on the screen or a picture giving you more visuals, so it's hopefully not too confusing, but basically that's what you're going to be writing on your own, hopefully. Uh, if you can't figure it out, uh, you know, I'll explain it later on in a few seconds here. So pause the video, try and figure it out, do whatever. And in a few seconds, I'm going to write it on my own. Now I'm going to write it on my own. I'm going to be honest. I don't actually remember ever writing this on my own. I think I might have written it once in like a different language, but we're going to give it a try in this language. See if I can get it first try. So uh, we're going to start with uh, our variable at one because we're printing one through 100. And we're going to make our m value 100. And we're going to keep our increment at 1 because we're incrementing i one by one. And we want to check every number. And what we're going to do is our first if statement, we're going to check if i is divisible by 5 by doing it that. And, we can, and then we're also going to have an and to check if it's also uh, divisible by 3. And if it is, then we'll print uh, fizzbuzz. And then we'll do an else if. And in this, we'll do i mod 3 equals 0. Then not this buzz, bro. What? I can't spell. <laughs> if it's divisible by 3, we print fizz and else if i mod 5 equals 0 then we'll print buzz all right so 
we're going to loop through 1 through 100 and we're going to check if the number is divisible by 1 or by 5 and 3. If it is, we print fizzbuzz. Otherwise, if it's divisible by just 3, we print fizz. And otherwise, we'll just print uh, buzz if it's divisible by 5. Hopefully, we get this first try. We'll see what happens. I mean, it seems to work. I don't have the number being printed, so maybe I should actually have the number being printed as well. So we'll just add the number to the end of the string so we know if we're getting it right. So let's go up to the top. Fizz, uh, 3 is divisible by 3 for the first one. Buzz, 5 is divisible by 5. 6 it would be fizz, 9 would be fizz, buzz, 10, fizz, 12. The first fizz buzz would be 15, obviously. And we'll keep going up until 100. And yeah, I mean, it seems to be working right. I got it first try. Seems like I'm a pretty much a pro scripter, honestly. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too long. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video.